What did I say? During the meanwhilest. During the meanwhilest. No, no, no. Like well, hello again. It's uh, it's the Pepster and me uh, back on that YouTube thing, uh, and this week we're going to let you into some of our best kept secrets for getting the best the best seascape images that you can. Okay, they're not secrets as such, uh, as they're all uh, pretty well known, really. But for anyone starting out and wanting to make seascape images, or for anyone just, you know, nosily interested in our workflow, then these are the methods uh, we've arrived at after many years of standing. Freezing cold, in it decks, and often uh, knee-deep or deeper sometimes in uh, salt water with our camera taking photographs. And before we begin, uh, I was hoping to present this video uh, from the seaside, but my health, my health is such at the moment that I can't get out and about just now. So you've got to make do with me uh, sitting at my desk and presenting the video from here and showing you some example images along the way. But we are, we are sorry about that. Right then, first off, a word about, do you want to go down? Hmm? Are you happy? Here we are, you stay here with me then. First off, a word about your own personal safety and your doggies, of course, too. Coastal environments with sometimes you know, like fast moving tides and rapidly changing conditions mean you need to be absolutely certain of your safety and constantly alert and aware to your surroundings and how uh, they may change uh, rapidly, really. Uh, no image, no matter how good, is worth risking injury, your kit, your dog or even your own life for. So make sure you know what the tide and the weather is going to do and always have a safe route away from your shooting location planned in advance. This is particularly important if you're unfamiliar with the area you're, uh, you're shooting at. As well as your own safety, remember to stow your bag or your kit away in a safe place, uh, high enough to be out of reach of any waves while still being safely in view. And if you can't do that, uh, keep it uh, secure in its kit bag on your back. And if you have to change lenses on the beach, I, I try to avoid this, but make sure you're out of the wind and you and your camera sensor is well protected. A grain of sand or a drop of salt water on it will result in a world, a world of hurt for your camera and for you. Now, once you're happy with all your and your kit safety aspects and your dogs, uh, then the following are all things you need to be familiar with for getting that great photo at the beach. I'll put you down, shall I? Go on then. When you're ready. There you are. When you <laughs> Remember this little saying, though, throughout. Uh, proper planning prevents poor performance. <laughs> and do. Nowhere is this more important uh, than with, with seascape shooting, really. As well as for your own safety, it's essential that you are familiar with the tide times for the area you want to shoot at. Uh, simply arriving, let's say, low tide. You okay? Simply arriving at low tide when you went, you know, like waves crashing over rocks isn't going to be ideal, is it? There uh, are any number of tide time apps available for, you know, phones as well as paper pamphlets uh, listing the tide times uh, for the year ahead for any given coastal area. Secondly, you need to know how the light affects the area you're shooting. Is it a better sunrise or sunset location? And you know, how does the sun uh, traverse or move across your scene? Again, there are apps available for this, but it's pretty well common sense, really, isn't it? And thirdly, there's the weather to consider. Uh, bad weather is often the most conducive to you know, good seascape photography. Dodging rain showers often yields fantastic coastal light. And more often than not, the worse the storm is, the better your images will be for it. Just uh, just be patient. And pro tip number one here, things can change rapidly in this environment. And great light can materialise really when least expected. For this image here, uh, for example, I was pretty well packed up and ready to go home and all of a sudden the light just, well, it happened. <laughs> and I got this shot. And although I guarantee you'll want to shoot glorious golden hour light, I found I'm at my happiest at the seaside when the weather is you know, like dull and grey. You can really make some fascinating and really moody images in these conditions. And pro tip number two here, don't ignore the drizzle. <laughs> then... Once all your planning is in place and the weather is looking promising, make sure to arrive on location early enough to give yourself plenty of time for the next pieces of the seascape banger equation. Firstly, you'll want to find a pleasing composition, and this is very much up to you and the look you want to achieve. Uh, there are, of course, all the usual rules you can follow, but you know they are there to be broken. <laughs> Always shoot to please your own eye, first and foremost. 
I'm always on the lookout for interesting things, you know, like a bit of driftwood, a rock or a structure maybe, or even something as simple as reflections or a pattern in the sand like in, uh, like in these images on screen right now. If you want to take a longer exposure, perhaps showing some silky movement in fast flowing waves, or you want to make a gently lapping sea seem flat calm, then you're going to need your, uh, your tripod to ensure you get a sharp image for the duration of your exposure. And by the way, uh, take a look at my friend Izzy's channel. Uh, I'll post a link above and, uh, and below. Uh, if you want some uh, some long exposure inspiration, the man is an absolute uh, master in this field. You won't be uh, you won't be uh, disappointed if you take a look at his channel. Trust me. In common with all types of photography, but perhaps more importantly at the coast, really make sure your tripod is sturdy enough and rated to hold your camera and lens firmly. After all, you don't want it falling in the sea. Setting your tripod up will depend then on whether you're on sand or uh, on rocks. If you're on sand, extend the lower, thinner section of your tripod's legs first and push them as far into the soft sand as you can. Uh, then, if you've got waves uh, lapping around the tripod feet, wait for a, a couple to wash over and then push it in even further. And this should ensure that your tripod won't sink uh, further during your exposure. Now, I used to advocate placing an old CD under each tripod foot but this only works on already uh, reasonably firm uh, sand. Ramming your tripod into the sand will give you a much more, much more solid base to work from. Remember though, when you get home to thoroughly wash your tripod to get rid of any sand and corrosive salt water still on it, then I'll link to a video I've made above about maintaining your tripod. Uh, I also keep a bottle of water in the car to, to rinse the worst of any uh, debris off before you know p p packing it away in the boot there. Now, once you've got your anchor point in the sand, next you want to attach your camera to your tripod head and fine-tune your composition. One important rule to follow here, though, is to really concentrate on getting your horizon 100% level, because it will show. Uh, it will show if you don't. Yes, you can always level it up in post-processing, but getting it right at the point of shooting is, to my mind, is to my mind essential. Next, you need to decide on where you want to focus. Now, if the scene has a focal point, such as the lighthouse in th this image, uh, you'll obviously want to focus on that. If the scene lacks any recognizable uh, point of focus, I find that focusing to uh, infinity or the horizon at the coast will often yield the best results. I'd recommend shooting a, a test image at this point and reviewing it on the camera screen or in the viewfinder to ensure you're happy. A focus is subject all of its own really and is dependent on other factors like the lens's focal length and your, your chosen aperture. Luckily in this digital age though we can shoot and check as, to, as often as we need to. You might find though you need to focus bracket and later stack to get 100% front to back sharpness if say you have a point of interest near your lens or you know several several throughout the scene. But that's for another day. In general uh, set your lens to something like f8 to f13, focus on the horizon and you'll be generally you'll be good to go. Next up, you need to decide on white balance and exposure. For the former, uh, I usually set my camera to a fairly neutral for outdoors, 5,300 Kelvin, and just, just leave it there. I then shoot it in RAW so I can fine tune this later if I need to, but that setting gives me an easy and fairly neutral starting point. Aperture will depend on the look you're after. You know, do, do you want a single focal point and then blur the background like this image of a shell, or you know, do you want do you want everything in focus? Obviously, the, the smaller your aperture, the more of your scene will be in focus. And as I said above, f8, f11, f13 will help you, help you achieve this. I always leave my camera's ISO at its base level, so 125 on my X-H2. And I rarely deviate from the setting and only do so in the extreme event of uh, needing to have a particular uh, shutter speed and aperture dialed in you know, exactly. Now, shutter speed, or the length of time you want your shutter open for, again depends on the look you're after. Do you want to maybe freeze wave action, in which case you're going to need a really fast shutter of 1 500th of a second, or even faster, really? Uh, and it's in these situations I might want to fiddle with my ISO. Or do you want to show some motion in the waves when a shutter of around 1 to 3 seconds is ideal, or... Uh, do you want to make the sea look like a misty, calm mill pond? 
uh, where you'll need a shutter of at least 30 seconds, 30 seconds to get this look. Obviously, to enable these longer shutter durations, you likely need to reduce the uh, the amount of light hitting your camera's sensor, and therefore you need uh, a neutral density filter. I use a uh, magnetic kit made by Case Filters, and I have a 3, 6, and 10 stop filter, along with a circular polarized here, and I'll post a link to my uh, review of these filters up there somewhere. <laughs> Learning how to use them and their effect is essential if you want to take decent long exposures. And the polarizer uh, will also help re reduce uh, any shiny reflections and the like on rocks uh, or the water in general. So is an essential, uh, I feel, for, for coastal work. One other essential piece of kit I found is to have some kind of remote uh, shutter release, either a cable operated or, you know, like Bluetooth type, Wi-Fi type one, you know. Uh, it really comes into its own when I'm trying to uh, critically uh, time some wave action or pattern. Uh, otherwise, you can get away with the camera's built-in self-timer, but then sometimes, you know, you are left, you are left guessing a little bit. Lastly, a plastic bag to cover your kit in an emergency if spray starts to hit it. Uh, or it starts to rain more likely in South Wales, uh, and a microfiber cloth to wipe everything down are re recommended items to carry with you. Then it's just a case of, you know, getting out to your chosen location and spending some time standing in cold water and just practicing, really. I mean, pra practice uh, really does make perfect. But even after many, many years of shooting seascapes, I find I'm always, always still learning and trying to get better. Uh, and if you like, I have published an 11-page guide to seascape shooting, which is available uh, for free on my blog. And there's a link in the description uh, below this video to take you uh, uh, to my blog. Uh, right, that'll do for this video. Uh, we'll be back on uh, Tuesday with a look at my new Fringer Smart Adapter. How can you cope? How can you cope with the excited anticipation I, I really have? I really have no idea. In the meantime, what do we say, Dex? He's sleeping. Be nice, okay? Just be nice. And uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. All right then, ta -ra.